I'm The Voice, and this is a Divi community-produced video from the Foundation. And today I've got Rob, and I've got Neegs, and boy, have we have got an update for you. How's it going, guys? It's going good. It's going good. Can't wait to get started here. It's going great. Happy to be with you guys. we got lots of news that's happening over the last couple of weeks. We had uh, some vetoes and some wishful hopes for some things for those who want regulations and and all that kind of stuff. What what what's going on with that SAB one twenty one? What's what happened with that? Yeah, so um, that was a kind of a, the crypto uh, you know leaders you know both in in, uh, in well in Congress really uh, their crack at you know taking a, at trying to get crypto regulation you know outside of the SEC uh, or at least get some clarity there or have them not be so in control of it. It was vetoed. <laughs> it was, I mean, it was, it was shot down pretty by Biden. Biden was like, nah, I like the SEC the way it is. Let's not run into this, uh, rush into this. So um, that's basically what happened. We can dive down a little bit more into it, but um, there was other hopes. There was that Fit 21 also, uh, which he said he wouldn't uh, veto. Uh, and I think that wasn't such a threat for, uh, for the SEC. Um, and I think, I, I don't think it was unexpected. It was just, you know, I think that's what it was. The SAB 121 was to hopefully um, give some guidelines for exchanges to help protect consumers, at least by showing how that they were safeguarding those assets, right? I mean, I don't, I don't think that's necessarily a negative. That could just be a standard business principle. If you take something in, in ownership, uh, in someone else, uh, um, there should be some sort of guideline for that. And, and banks have those kinds of guidelines too. So maybe not exactly the same, but uh -oh. that's how they can get their insurance at least, right? They have to prove certain securities and functions and those kinds of things. That's right. And apparently, apparently what was great is um, what actually was rejected by Biden, which is it was removing it from the control of the SEC. And yeah, it would have been great, but I think that in any case, it is still really nice to see that um, like the political field is actually interested and looking a little more knowledgeable than they were in the last uh, regulations that they tried to pass. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, in reality, it's sad that it doesn't go through, but at least it is, is, a, it is a good news that uh, we can have things like that showing up and it might not pass this time, but at the end of the day, I, I'm pretty sure that we'll keep pushing and things similar to that will, uh, will be accepted. Yeah, I think, I think that's kind of the history of legislation in America that, you know, you keep doing it, you keep doing it, and, and finally, uh, you know, something happens. It's not a great process, right? Nothing, they, they stick stuff into, um, into other bills and so forth and things show up not clean uh but over time uh you know the ch the, the gov government historically government follows culture and i i think crypto is being more and more accepted i think we can see the expansion in the markets um and eventually we'll get there uh it's just frustrating because uh it's not that we want more regulation we just don't want the regulation that exists to prevent us from doing work or, you know, providing benefits or providing yeah. services. And that's a huge right now in America. Other countries have seemed to have figured this out, you know, in 15 years or however long it's been. Right. <laughs> like, um, but in America, we're still they're still making it very difficult. And I, I mentioned this. I think I mentioned this previously. Mark, I like how Mark Cuban kind of pointed it out was like, you know, I want to, these companies, they're legitimate crypto companies. They're, you know, I, I can list off a few, you know, like, uh, I mean, Blockstream and Helium and all of these companies that want to do things and provide services that are blockchain based can't in America. It's very difficult. Um, it, it took years for strike to serve everyone in America. Um, and, uh, he's like, well, I want to invest in these companies and they can't do business here. So they create shell companies offshore or whatever. And he's like, I'm not touching those. Uh, and yeah. so there's no investment in America in crypto. Well, I can't say none, 
but it's it, like the bar for just starting a business, a crypto business and providing services and following the normal kind of investment paths are, are very uh, laced with friction at every step of the way. And that's just bad for America. And, yeah. you know, Biden is currently participating in making it worse. Um, so we'll get there. I think I think Meeks is right. I think we'll see that it, it improves with time. Um, and unfortunately, the way it improves with time is not by loosening regulations. It's just by making it clear. Um, and that will be more regulations. Uh, hopefully those regulations will lift res the restrictions that we are implicitly getting by not having them. Um, it sucks. But yeah, I know, right. I know your that's position politically and, and, yeah. and fiscally when it comes to, let's say, from a capitalist point of view. And so I would yeah. agree with you. Less, less is better, but if you do have it, it should be at least minimalistic and direct so it's clear right and yeah. it shouldn't be crazy like that sorry neeks go ahead uh, no i was uh, actually going to say that um there is still the fit 21 that is uh, mm -hmm. supposed to be on on route to uh, senate but actually we don't know right we don't know if yeah. we um, even end there at some point we do hope that um i think that um Again, like we we will see more, um, we will see more attempt to pass regulations like that. Uh, it's not because this one didn't pass that um, it it is the end. It is again. Actually, I think it's a good news. It, it's not as good as it could be, but yeah. we're kind of moving in the right direction anyway. And I agree. Fit twenty one is. I think it's in many ways it's complementary. They kind of do work together in some respects. Both of those, the SAB 121 and the FIT 21, though they're looking at separate things, they do work together. I think if they're just basic guidelines for exchanges um, and clarity for exchanges, my opinion is, is that it's a good thing all around, right? So, well, it's all acts towards normalization, right? I mean, yeah. like as it, all of it, you know, it gets discussed, it shows up in news. Uh, all of that acts towards normalization. People, mm -hmm. I think, in fact, most people still think crypto is weird and fake money and, you know, nerd stuff I, like I, I, or, or grifting stuff. And while there's elements of that in crypto and almost every other market, uh, <laughs> um, I, I think just it becoming normalized is, 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 uh, is just part of this path or this is this is part of the path of becoming normalized so yeah you know i i think of it good in that way bad in other ways but you know just another step <laughs> another right. step and we talked about that in other topics but th yeah. there is like ideally we could do those things and we wouldn't have to bother with all those regulations but in the world we are today the whole economy right. is actually relying on stable regulation they are expecting regulation and now if you don't have them then yeah. most of the economy is just not going to interact with yep. this part of the new economy right so having regulations is is definitely something that <laughs> despite not being really happy to be regulated yeah. and to have the government uh, setting how we should uh, use assets or things like that mm -hmm. at the end of the day if we want companies to use it <clears throat> If we want institutions to use it, there needs to be mm -hmm. uh, some regulations that are reliable. Yep. Yeah, nobody wants to do something and then have somebody else come back, let's say the government, and say, oh, you're wrong. Yeah. You, yeah. you got to pay us. <laughs> well, and, and, you know, and people suffered for that, right? The library yeah. people, samurai people, uh, all of that stuff. Maybe we'll talk about samurai a la little later. Uh, but there's, but there's something more I, I want to talk about because it happened a little bit more recently, which is Cosmos. Um, mm. I, you know, we like to, you know, whenever you're in another project, you, there, you know, you like, you, there is this tendency to go, oh, look, something bad happened in this other project. You know, and Cosmos went down, well, it was halted for what, four hours, I think. Yeah. Something, yeah, something like, like that. that. Nearly yeah. five. Yeah. I mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, it, it, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of funny to sit and glee a little bit but you know there's 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 two parts to it to me um i think it's important that we notice that it happened because it's a major blockchain right it, 
Mm-hmm. I think it's top 10. If, if not, it's close. Um, you know, almost everybody's heard of Cosmos. It's an, it's, it's a very well done chain. I, th- I think like the idea is for me, it's the first one where they're kind of offloading, uh, all of the kind of, uh, the applications off of the main chain, which is one mm-hmm. of my biggest problems with Ethereum and, and, uh, Polygon. I think, I think doing it that way is bad. Like, because when one is successful and the fees go up or, or the, block times uh, lengthen, then everybody suffers from it, even though you've got nothing to do with that project. I think Cosmos solved part of that problem by having their their and dot dot with their parrot chains, Cosmos with their um, application chains. Um, so it went down and the application chains, can they, they continue going. But the issue is funds are stuck on those application chains for those those hours and couldn't move to another one because funds move through the main ch- uh, the main hub right um, or apps and, if the apps are, right. or or anything in those in, in those situations to where you rely upon a hub right whatever's going through that hub could be transactions could be applications could be anything 4 yeah. hours is a long time to have something affect holistically everything yeah um, it really does yeah. So I look at Cosmos as like the first step to improving the situation that I really just really hate. Oh, both and on Bitcoin now that you know ordinals are there, right? I just want to do Bitcoin stuff. I don't want anything to do with ordinals. Ordinals, and now all of a sudden it's a hundred dollar fee, <laughs> you know, to move ten dollars of stuff. Yeah, like that happens. You know, I mean that, and that <laughs> happens because of the the idea that if there's more volume, there's a priority. As a miner, I can charge more. Yeah. I mean, so it naturally yeah. corrects itself. The economy itself does correct itself because other miners may say that they will mine for less, give them more opportunities if they do win the opportunity to mine that block. Does it always happen like that? No, but that's the way Satoshi designed it. I agree Mm -hmm. that if you have a straw and you're trying to suck your milkshake through that straw, if I start putting French fries in there, (laughs) it doesn't go very well. That's a pretty good analogy. (laughs) So yeah, we, we have to... Make sure that whatever the utility is that's provided, if it's value transfer, which is the one point you're speaking about, right. value transfer, you can't impede value transfer if your goal is to have also, let's say, legal contracts, buying a home or something. If all of a sudden everybody starts buying homes and putting those contracts online, which are then eventually stored at the local county or wherever they're going to do it, you don't want that action, or in the case of ordinals, Bitcoin, you don't want that action to then kill everyone that's doing value transfer, yeah. that they're just paying somebody for something. That doesn't make sense. Right. So I look at Cosmos as like a step along the way to improving that. Uh, and then, th- you know, this happened. And then this is where we kind of, I personally kind of look at that Cosmos is relatively centralized because, um, you know, the I'm going to call it the owners of the hub. I think voice, you can probably do a better job, but you know, there is a group of people who, who they're elected, it. right? Yeah. Elected, huh? <laughs> right. Uh, who bandaided the problem and you know, oh, yeah. Yeah. made it, made it work again in a couple of hours, but they, you know, it, they didn't fix it in a way that this won't happen again. Um, I mean, it was in the code. It was how the yeah. validators leave or join the hub, right? And so you can only have so many. Neegs, you read something about that also. That's right. Um, go ahead. Yeah, so I think that it's important also to talk about what kind of centralization, because I think that here we actually have two um, two types of centralization in the same case. and. One is centralization for the power and very clearly uh, for the hub, you need to have a specialized team. It's not something that everybody is able to contribute. Um, So there is a centralization there, but then also there is infrastructure centralization because as the hub was non-functional for five hours, basically Mm -hmm. the whole system stopped, right? And so I think it is very important. And again, I. I join you in in saying that um, it is a great, a great system. What Cosmos built is really impressive. However, uh, it does have some limitations, right? Like you can't just, um, a lot of time you can't just get to the solution immediately and you have to get intermediary technologies to, um, to keep moving forward. And, and I think that it is important to 
see where they're good, right? And it is also important to see where they have limitations. And here, those two situations where you have centralization is actually a major problem because now that everything is going through the hub, uh, then everything is is locked. And it is actually uh, something that we highlighted um, in, in our sidechain model as one of our biggest advantage is being able to scale the whole ecosystem through sidechains, allow to basically avoid uh, connecting everything and putting everything at risk when you deploy something. So here, mm -hmm. I mean, the thing that happened is not something that is scary or um, very problematic. They pushed an update. Um, it didn't go as they expected and they had to push a patch uh, uh, quickly. But again, the problem is the centralization of that hub um, in terms of infrastructure. The problem is that it blocked everything, right? So if you have yeah. every service on each of their uh, own sidechain, then it could only block that sidechain and nothing else. Nothing, no other service would be, would be locked by these kind of operations. And yeah, this is, this is an obvious risk that you have when you put everything through a central hub. Yeah, and that's yeah. very different than, uh, again, I agree. I think Cosmos is, a, they have their own philosophy for building. Um, I think they put a lot of work into it. I think there is that, you, you don't want to be critical because you can see what kind of work has gone into it. And you both know I've worked for other networks that are interoperable. And so I have some biases that go along there. Um, the point being is that the work, yes, but there is a consistent pooling together of resources. And in the case where you have a hub experience this and breaks everything, it it's, it's not the team that centralizes it because every Bitcoin core update means people put that in there and they push that out. But the way it updates and the way miners update one miner doesn't affect everything or the process for that one miner who may have updated or wherever that was pushed to doesn't affect everyone all at the same time. There has to be some consensus, a majority consensus. I think BIP9 is what they're using now before they do updates. But um, it, it really makes me feel a little bit uncomfortable. It doesn't mean that they're not a, a good blockchain. It's just not my preference. And I think that's where we we come into um, helping blockchains like this, helping blockchains uh, improve even more so their interoperability. They can still have their own utility processes. That's a big congratulations for them, especially as they do these updates. I mean, Solana has had similar, not technologically speaking, but they've had similar pauses in the blockchain. That makes anyone who says decentralization uncomfortable, but we can help other blockchains even um, integrate some of our protocols. And so that is where we have to come together and help each other as opposed to say, hey, you stink. No, you don't stink. You got a good idea. You know, it, 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 it doesn't mean you change what you're doing, but you can kind of do these kinds of things and we can all work together better and uh, maybe lessen some of those probabilities. So anyway, that was another thought I was having. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Go ahead. I uh, want to talk about. Uh, I think you had a story about Samurai Wallet, right? Oh, not much of a story. Like you know, I think the end, the kind of the end of the story happened there, right? So they, you know, they those guys went to court. The shut they shut down the wallet, and then like nine others showed up. I mean, <laughs> like that is a whack. I mean, if that's if they're going to pursue this, they're going to be playing whack a mole for years. Um, like the. It is a, it, it's like the Streisand effect. We, you know, like you just can't stop this. That technology is out there. People are going to use it. People from outside the country are going to use it uh, or make it available, and other people are going to use it. It's it's not a great. I, I, for me, I don't think it's a, a great use of resources to try to fight that. Um, they're going to. I don't. I don't see any reason why. I, I mean, I, I see them continuing that dumb battle. But once the technology's out, 
I, there's not a way to stop that. The best thing to do is to learn how to work with it. And people providing services are not bad guys. People doing bad things are yeah. bad guys. Um, That's right. And I think, uh, I think it's something you can see that is very similar to um, downloads, um, you know, pirating for downloads or games mm. or whatever. And you can see that every time there is one of those websites that is taken mm -hmm. down, uh, immediately you have a dozen that are popping up with a yeah. similar name, a similar uh, look, so that because they want to capture the audience. Because again, it, as you said, um, this is not the way you you actually address that. And also that, right, you can see that the, the biggest hit to piracy that happened is things like Netflix, uh, totally. things like Spotify. Sure. So exactly. it is not by um, trying to um, go against the wind, because very yeah. clearly that, that's what it looks like. Because, yep. uh, yeah, it, it just doesn't work. There is too much um, opportunity. There is for, for an, like someone who would want to create a quote-unquote business, because at the end mm -hmm. of the day, um, this is what it looks like for them. There is money to be made. And, yeah, and yeah unless uh, they find a good solution to replace that kind of wallet to offer the same kind of service, then many of those will, will actually still pop up and compete. I think it really comes down to, it's not exactly, but it's close enough. When you're using applications that are all communicating through a centralized service, I, we tend to put that into web three, right? Nearly 99% of all of your web three out there, your light wallets, your desktop light wallets. Uh, if all you're doing is putting in a seed phrase and it finds all of your assets, or even if it's a single coin and it's not syncing a core and broadcasting its own transactions and being its only, only source of authority. If you're having to send that through another application where they're, where even the code itself is constructing a transaction. Um, if it's not on chain constructed, if it's not part of the protocol, it makes it very easy for anyone to say, shut this down, shut this network mm -hmm. down. Um, that can happen if things, if things go awry, right? we're talking about politics in the U S we're always surprised, right? But politics in the world, when politicians make a decision, it can affect hundreds of thousands or millions of people. And if somebody says, well, I don't like that service samurai, or I don't like put your favorite mobile app blockchain wallet in here. I don't, I don't think that's a good service. All they have to do is figure out where that service communicates through and ask for that website or that IP. They literally took over the domain. Isn't that what they did? They took over everything, all, all the network for I, Samurai. Yeah. So all you have to do is take that over. That is not blockchain. Right. <laughs> blockchain is something to where you have freedom and you have censorship resistance. Um, if you, if you're a newbie, right, that's something that, that you should know that in these situations, if you want to make sure, if you want to make sure that you always have your own freedoms and you can prevent censorship. So if you're using a, a service and you're sending your transactions through, you can't, if somebody has taken over that service, you should have your own node. If you can't, I'm suggesting it no matter what coin, no matter what maybe not tokens, that makes it a little bit more difficult, but no matter what coin you have, you should be, I would hope, wanting to be part of the seeds of the future and let your roots spread and represent that ability to be, be free and to be censorship resistant, you know? So, sorry, I got a little bit preachy there, Yeah, but that's, that's how always, that happens. Uh, that's always a good reminder. Um, I think we, we always hammer it. Um, and I, I understand that for most people, it's kind of, it, it kind of seems, um, not, not attractive. I mean, of course, like, I guess a lot of you have, um, used the desktop wallet and the mobile yeah. wallet, and then you've seen the difference for convenience, right? However, it is, it is really that, right? It is convenience. And for this convenience, you lose, you lose some of your sovereignty. So. 
in reality, both That's are it, great. One hundred percent. Like, yeah, they are both great. You kind of you kind of need both because the desktop wallet in some situations is um, definitely not as easy to deal with. Like you're not carried around. Um, and then the, the mobile wallet is limited in uh, the kind of features that it can have compared to the desktop, and it is reliant on external services, right? So if you have any issue, you can always go back to your desktop wallet because you don't need to connect to a server. You you are the network. So it, exactly. it is really uh, It, is it really doesn't how it matter works. which light wallet you put in there either. It doesn't right. matter who it is. There are so you true light daemons that's a that's a key word for a, a service inside a mobile wallet light daemons inside a mobile wallet so i think i can only name just a handful and i will be honest with you most people don't use those because what they get used to is logging into a mobile wallet punching in their seed words importing their private key and bang their balance shows because what that mobile wallet does is it goes, oh, that's your address. Let me call the application endpoint, the API, where I'm going to check the balance on that address. And then when you want to spend from it, it goes, oh, you want to spend from this. Let me get the list of spendable transactions that you have. And then you got to create that transaction. Most people don't use those. The desktop is a full node, meaning it's a, a, a we're totally off the subject, but we're, the desktop is Sorry. a full mining node. And there's, there, that is something serious. That's available on nearly every blockchain unless, unless you're an end user and you're looking at some of the EVM style chains, right? You don't have that. All you have is a light application. And if all you have is a light application, it really does weaken the decentralized or at least the freedom standpoint of that entire blockchain. That's right. Um, yeah. So I guess uh, I think we want to ask our viewers, listeners, whether this, this avatar kind of thing works for them. Uh, I know it works for us. Um, also, the fact that we're in different places. And I, it's kind of neat to look at us this way. I think uh, I like it. Um, but, you know, we are now asking for comments specifically about this format. If you guys want to change anything. Um, and more questions. Uh, not just the format. Do you, do you like the way we dress? Do you like my hair? Um, <laughs> do you like uh, Neek's hair? No. Right. Do you, uh, the, the, uh, the places we push this out to things like that. Um, we really just want to take a moment to, uh, ask for some comments and, uh, uh, you know, be friendly, be harsh, whatever. Uh, if you think this is the dumbest thing ever, or, or if this is working for you, I uh, just want to take a few moments to really discuss, you know, what work, what works and what doesn't work about this format. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, That's right. other things, so oh, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, maybe we wanted also to talk about uh, why. Why are we using this format on, on mm -hmm. our side, right? And so I think that one of the concerns is that, um, first of all, voice has always been very private, right? So we wanted to we wanted to keep that. And then there is also the consistency. We wanted, like, it was complicated to have, like, one person showing their face and then another one not showing their face. So... Mm -hmm. We thought that it was it was kind of a, a better idea to to move and and try to do that. And of course, we understand that it is a little less personal that if you were saying our faces. But I think that it's more unique. It is like there is nobody doing that, and and so I think that it is also an interesting thing because I believe that those. Every time we're trying to improve a little bit the quality, but I think that if it is really appreciated, like if people actually like it, um, we could also get uh, more defined avatars. Uh, we could actually do something that looks uh, a little more professional, have some trackers for uh, arms or things like that. And it could exactly. actually be a very interesting thing. I think I think that you know what I would always teach and most everyone who I've spoken to whether it's on concierge calls even when I've met people in person I encourage them not to use their personal information 
online. I've mm -hmm. always been that way. And I think that one of the biggest reasons that you don't is you make yourself a target. And there have been hundreds and hundreds of cases of individuals all the way up to people who own exchanges, all the way down to just regular people who make the mistake of speaking about cryptocurrencies and using their real information. Mm. Some of those people have been murdered. Some of those people have been injured. Some of those people have had family members injured. All sorts of things go along with that. I'm not an anonymous person, just like neither of you are, but online, I am a pseudo anonymous person. And there's been at least, I could say, um, personally, maybe 40 people, even in Divi and in other blockchains who I've met in person. So, yep, it's, um, yeah. it's just, that's just the way I would do it. I, I'm, no, I'm that's an excellent point. Um, yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, it is, um, it is always a very good, uh, it is always a very good recommendation. We've seen many times how people become a target by up totally. too much, right? Um, so it, it is understandable. Now, I think that not everyone is that familiar with that and with actually the importance of respecting those things, um, especially in crypto. So that's why I think it's good to, um, you know, explain um, why, what's the idea behind it. And, and again, I think that we can also make it something unique and interesting and not just um, a tool to uh, preserve the, the identity, right? Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. I mean, all you have to do is Google it. You know, you get how I got scammed out of my crypto. Yeah. People who know your personal name, um, a lot of people are freaked out about um, SIM hacks. That's one big thing. Well, SIM hacks usually don't happen to people unless they're a big wig, right? So that means they are known for having access to or ownership of lots of stuff. Well, how do they get SIM hacked? It's because people know their name. If you're a smaller person on a social media platform or a communication platform, whatever it is, Rocket Chat, Telegram, Discord, Facebook, you know, I guess it's whatever it's called now, Meta or something, Twitter and you're using your real name that is very easily found um, for $15 or so, um, you put yourself at risk, especially your address and all sorts of things. It's just, just not a good thing. There's so many examples of people losing everything or at least putting their life at risk because they're bragging accidentally about their assets. Yeah. <laughs> it's just not, not good to yeah. do. Yep. And uh, so that's that's definitely one good reason for for this. I, I'm obviously a lot less private. People know my real name. You guys are using my real name. Uh, people have my Twitter handles uh, and so forth. So uh, it's not that I'm not worried about it. You don't. I don't post a lot of pictures of me. I definitely don't put up anything about my family um, or my address or anything like that. People do know I live in different places, um, but um, so. But I, I definitely find this an easier platform, especially since my I'm notorious for having a shitty camera. I've improved it, but you know, <laughs> it's just I don't have to worry about what's behind me. There's a whole bunch of you know convenience reasons why this works for me, also, and I just like the consistency. It, uh, it also streams better when you're streaming yeah. that full video. It streams at a different rate than the avatars do. So even though the avatars are kind of goofy, if you look at the colors in the avatars, yeah. they're very simplistic in their details and when you get these right. 1080p cameras or higher right uh, these cameras can be so high in the streaming it does try to adjust but it just ends up being terrible yeah which is what we experienced with you remember that was yes yeah was it definitely terrible. was bad <laughs> right and we can can also change any time where we are like i could change the you know the background of things like that right now we have this format yeah. but or, I mean, or we ourselves. have. I can. <laughs> I can be different people. That's true, but we <laughs> have. We have really like a me. lot of options um, yeah. moving forward, and it is again something that is uh, very new. Like we are actually using a function in Zoom that is extremely new in Beta, and uh, we will we will move forward. And we thought that it is still a little bit better quality than what you have in the 
you know, 3D um, metaverse uh, yeah. websites. Yeah. It is. So it is a lot better. We're still, we're still looking into that, and we might move to that at some point when we consider it's actually, um, it's actually good enough. But right now, it's, uh, it's good for us to record. We also record on another, uh, another application so that we really have uh, the best sound possible. And, and yeah, so that's, um, that's currently what we have. And we, we hope that you, you actually like it. Um, the feedback we have now seems to be pretty positive. We have a, few, a very few people who, who, who seems to be extremely angry at, at this approach. But besides that, um, most people seems to like it and find it funny. Maybe maybe they are hoping I'm a little old lady. Let me. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, there you go. You're a little old. No, but she's more younger looking, actually. (laughs) Yeah, I can't get old. (laughs) Um, So Uh, anybody who's had a con, go ahead. ahead. Uh, The only other thing, really, about this about our format is not just the way we look, but like what we're covering. Yeah. Um, So like we kind of do a theme where we do some more mark, like what's what's up in crypto kind of stuff. Uh, and then we'll do some technical stuff. We'll do some Divi stuff. We kind of keep it all Divi related today. We talked about cosmos. Um, and I guess I'm wondering from people if, if they would like it, if we had a segment, like a consistent segment of us talking about another chain, there's thousands of them out there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's probably tens of interesting and good ones. Uh, that I like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not like, that aren't really just like copies of something else or 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 something like that. But nice. <laughs> Nick, yeah, don't um, make Nick yeah. mad. <laughs> Sorry, did I piss you off? <laughs> um, but yeah. So topic wise, also looking for input. Um, whether we want to keep it Divioni only, do you want to dive down tech into more tech technical levels of blockchain and Divi? Do you want to talk about other projects? Um, but, you know, if we're missing something and you want to see it and we, you know, and it's, you know, other people are, you know, agree or we agree, um, then let's get it in there. Um, I think exactly. be, I don't, I don't, I think it'd be good to have more stuff. I think we can That's get right. super technical on, on yeah. Divi. Right. And mm-hmm. I think we can get super technical on other blockchains. I, I know that I've worked with and I've helped. Oh, I can't, I can't even tell you how many different people but of course how many different blockchains that i've helped people get started on because they get stuck somewhere Mm -hmm. but that also means that i also learn those protocols and many i've participated in even in their communities and so have you rob so from a technical standpoint we can get i can get very technical if we want to on cosmos to a certain level um and we can get technical on those but i think if I'm going to think about it, I think what we should probably do and the community can give feedback on it is how those other chains can integrate with what we're talking about. It's, I, I don't want to be an us versus them kind of a situation. Divi should be, um, everywhere. We'll put quotes around it. You know, yeah. that's, that was no, the philosophy. it's not it us versus them. I think that's, that's yeah. a huge point to make. Um, I fully do not believe in one chain to rule them all. Um, and in fact, what, what we're proposing with our side chains is us connecting to them. Uh, right. Trustlessly. Them, I mean, them, that's the big with deal. It, with that's quotes right. around that empty section, connecting yeah. to them. Who could be really anyone? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and like, I, I think that it will also be interesting. And that's what I think we've tried to, we've tried to do with the other episode. We try to go through... Um, what others are proposing and how our proposal is um, basically a better solution, a, a step Correct. forward compared to where they are. And, and I think we'll continue to do that. We will try to go deep down into each of those projects that, again, we actually think are great. They're, what they achieved is insane. And so we want to show how we can improve those projects, like we can improve Divi, right? And so we do believe that it is an opportunity for, for everybody at the end yeah. of the day. And, and yeah, and so it will be also an opportunity for those videos. We'll try to go through all that. And I think we will also um, circle back, right? We'll probably talk about topics that you already heard. Um, because again, we need, we need to be able to reach people. We need to be able to uh, talk again about those things. People won't go back to a video from two months ago. 
And so usually not. It, yeah. Uh, come, come to us if you want to hear about something particular. If you want us to go deeper on one topic, we could have talked about this topic in a video, but then you really want to have a special aspect of it, um, their marketing campaign, the way they mm -hmm. deployed their technology. Um, mm -hmm. And then we can, we can definitely look into that. That's, um, that's something interesting. And I think also uh, we, we might have, we will see, Uh, because we're planning to have somebody um, to interview somebody, a partner for this video, but yeah. the planning is a bit late, so we don't know if we will be able to fit it in. However, um, it will be coming, right? Like we were yeah. definitely talking with people. We're making sure that um, we make them come, talk about their product, talk about um, yeah. the new things they have. And, and yeah, and it is, I think that it is for us, Um, something that works, that's the a format that is working. And, and that's why we will uh, we'll keep moving forward with that. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. It's a good idea. Good. So I think another thing that we wanted to talk about um, is, a, do we want to talk about controversial topics, right? Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that, so it's interesting because it brings people from the outside, right? But it, it can also be complicated because... TV has a specific direction and we obviously don't want to just um, show that we're the best and others are bad. This is absolutely not our, um, our approach. And so we're trying to see if you would be interested that we talk about those things. We actually approached a few like the Jenner situation or um, other topics. And so, yeah, what, what would be your idea on that? Maybe we could have spaces to talk about those things. Yeah, we haven't yep. had spaces uh, for a long while. We've been doing this format and wow, I can't even talk about how much benefit this format is regardless if we're asking for it. This format has provided lots of resources for us to cut up and share and you're doing all the work needs. But I think that spaces provides a little bit more of a free thinking environment, right? And yeah. it, it allows people to sort of join and, and really quick ask questions. And we, we actually do get some questions and we are encouraging questions on the YouTube and on, you know, Twitter X, um, the videos that we have there. Um, make those comments relative to what, what, what's there. If you have a separate question, obviously if you have something unique that's unrelated, Um, on this section of the video, add it here, you know, just make, make them so that, so that things are relative to what the topic is. And what we'll do is we'll just condense those all down and we can answer them. But a spaces will free your mind a little bit. It's a little bit harder to do. I think when we're re-recording or pre-recording these as we have our topics, it would be kind of cool. Um, maybe even cool. We could actually spin this up like we're doing right now and do it live. Um, yeah, that would be nice. You know, that would be, be really cool. <laughs> we could just do this. Nice, you can make the whole background really pretty. And uh, then we could just spin it up and we can have people and guests and people ask questions. And then, yeah, we could do all sorts of stuff. It would be, it sure. would be cool. Do some live stuff. Uh, we actually do have a couple of questions. Do you want to, you want to hit those? I mean, have sure, a little sure, bit. Sure, I, I, I was uh, just perusing the uh the youtubes yeah and um <clears throat> so we we can we'll talk about the joke ones at the end we're talking about the avatar so maybe that'll be some of our funny shorts sure um mm -hmm. i think uh it was uh mr sean 1984 he had asked when uh, when marketing starts is it going to is it essentially what he's asking is when marketing starts is the announcement of the side chain partner going to be announced that's right um, so i think that go ahead. There is some um, specific differences that needs to be made here, just to clarify. So there is uh, DV and the work that DV is doing, and basically what we've been doing in the last couple of months for Correct. that we could call marketing or maybe more accurately communication. And mm -hmm. all of that is done. It's done internally, right? So. Then there is the paid marketing that is again coming from TV that is relying on budget, obviously. And so this is the thing that you can read with Rob's article, which is an, a great article about how marketing works. Um, 
behind the curtain? How, how does it really work in the industry? And we will have other articles that detail in each of the components of that. And then uh, the next step will be uh, to s select a strategy for that and start to collect money through the DAO. Um, so this is basically the next step for marketing on the DV side. But then there is the side chain and the partner, which is the second, the second element of this question. Mm -hmm. I think, again, it is important to separate both. So the partner has its own strategy, its own budget. And whenever the partner becomes public is whenever they will start to basically um, talk about their technology, talk about us being the recipient of this technology. And so, yes, at this time, you you'll be able to expect some... Um, we could expect some big movements um, in Correct. the press and about like a lot of lights um, on us at that time. Um, however, as we said last time, right, this is uh, rely on the next milestone. So um, as we say, July quarter three, this is, uh, this is our expectation right now. As you know, things sometimes have a bit of delay, but right now I think that they're still on time. So um, this, is, uh, this is the next, uh, the next step for that. Yeah, I think that's, that's key. Um... Uh, the announcements around that, I won't add too much, but, um, you know, how that technology is going to benefit validators today, right? I think that's really what it comes down to. It benefits those who are Divi now and, um, everything goes together. It's, it's, I can't wait. How about that? How, that's, that's probably what I should say. I can't wait. Right. I'm excited. <laughs> and yeah. Also, um, about uh, questions, communication, our presence, um, if you think that we should be on a specific platform, you don't see us there and you believe that some of our content could be there and all that, don't hesitate to propose that. Again, you can use that form, yeah. um, the feedback proposal form. It is really open to, to every different proposal. And again, think that we're doing it ourselves. If you believe that some of the things could have a different angle, uh, different graphics or things like that, don't hesitate to come, especially if you have the skill set to, uh, to add to this content, that's, uh, that's definitely welcome. And otherwise we'll just, we'll just keep moving forward with that. That's true. That's true. That it, we are doing this ourselves and, um, and we should always be warm and welcoming for community members to jump in and uh, they are our fellow community members and some of you may have that experience some of you may have uh, a different skill set they may better optimize what we're doing or as Neegs was just suggesting better distribute the message um, as i stated before i had been uploading to both library and Rumble, those are under my accounts. There's no official Divi account. Maybe we could look into making a Divi account on those, um, but you can find th at least the ones from four back are out both on um, Rumble and, and uh, Library. But if you know of another one, just let me know. Let me. Yeah. I think you just Rob said something that, that uh, um, be reiterated, which is, you know, the three of us are, are just community members it's not like I, I i i think people forget it like we we don't mm, we don't yeah. can really control anything we are you know we've gotten ourselves in a position in which we can help and do things uh we're doing something anything anybody can do uh if they wanted to i remember uh somebody was doing uh divi related uh kind of podcasting mm -hmm. um I don't know if he's, I'm trying to protect a discord handle or not. Um, Crypt, Crypto Sherpa still does stuff. And I know David he, is doing yeah, some things. And... David's the one I was thinking of. I just yeah. wasn't sure if he had a, if I needed to protect it. No. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so, it, I mean, this is really along, along the lines of that, us trying to get, you know, Divi on exchanges or whatever we're doing, which we'll talk about. Um, that's, that's just us uh, as community members. We're not paid by anything. Um, we're just, you know, we want this to work out as much as you do. Uh, and so we just, we're sitting here in a virtual room trying to make it happen. Um, so <laughs> if you, if, if you want to help and all you're helping is, Hey, maybe you guys should do this or that, then do that. Or if raise you your hand, you do something. raise yeah, your hand you and want, say, I will help. 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, or yeah. Or if um, um, you want to uh, do something like this and need uh, advice or, you know, our experiences or, or just want to do things on here, just do it. Um, mm -hmm. So that's that we, we got together uh, months ago and said, this is what we're going to do. Exactly. Um, that's right. And uh, yeah. And so I think we can actually move to the next topic because the next topic is actually about a uh, sidechain use case. Right. Oh yeah. yeah. Let's do that yeah, before so, we do the funny stuff. And it is actually okay. related to the question because the question was asking if um, we will be developing uh, DEX and uh, EVMs and if we will also have a sidechain potentially for businesses. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the technology does allow that. And um, at the base of a DEX is actually, um, at the base of the functionality of a DEX is a liquidity pool. Right? Correct. And so um, what we'll talk about uh, today is a liquidity pool that would be um, basically sitting on a side chain. And that would be the base of a DEX. So um, currently, what we have is most of the uh, quote unquote DEX are actually smart contracts that are non-immutable. They are actually multi-sig smart contract. And then they are on one blockchain. So obviously, there is the Uniswap case. Uniswap is actually an um, immutable smart contract. They can't be modified. Um, however, their interface is centralized, right? Correct. So it is, it is kind of blurry. There was a lot of drama when they removed 100 coins or something like that. Um, so they, they do have some control. However, the um, liquidity pools themselves, they, they are not um, in control of Uniswap. However, the problem that there is, the limitation that they have is that they're not interoperable, right? It's only on Ethereum, and then you will be able to do a liquidity pool for all the Ethereum token, but then you won't be able to move out of that. Or again, you will have to use a mechanism, either a completely centralized mechanism, or you will have to use a smart contract, which has a multi-sig. So, exactly. So smart contracts themselves, even though we're talking about the contracts being immutable, there's private keys. They're either owned by someone, they're either controlled by the contract. Maybe they're using some sort of multi-party computation on them. Maybe they're gone. I have no idea, but they need to have keys. Somebody has access. That's the issue with these kinds of technologies is, is there is a centralized point because it's not on chain. It's the off chain stuff that makes things riskier. It's the off chain things that make things um, have issues. If we look at the hacks that you had compiled a list from for the longest time, I think you had billions and billions of dollars that had been lost from hacks that includes smart contract platforms. It's not a blockchain, but that's a smart contract that is a platform that most of the time people will just call it a blockchain. It's operating, or there's been DEXs that have been leveraged um, because of that. I mean, so I, I, I think we can help those DEXs, if anything. Um, but yes, it's, it comes down to what Neegs was saying. UTXO blockchains have transactions and those transactions are unique. UTXO blockchains like Bitcoin or Litecoin or Divi or Dash, and you start putting all of the different blockchains in them. Each receipt is a single transaction and they're unique. They're not pooled together. Balances are, are not an illusion, but balances are an aggregate of those totals. It makes it more difficult to aggregate into a pool individual UTXO transactions because each one is unique. So that's the issue. That's why these smart contracts do work well. Um, and that's why that, that atomic swapped based DEXs didn't work well um, because of this limitation on UTXOs. This new technology with the side chains allows a bridging in a much better way, a poolability of coins of those transactions into the pool trustlessly, right? We're not trusting 
a, a smart contract. We're not trusting an individual. We're not trusting multi-party computation. We're not trusting the said immutability of a smart contract. It is on chain. It is not off chain. And I kind of went on a rant here, but the fact is, is that a DEX, as complicated as it is on a side chain, is pure. It's beautiful. It stays in the ownership of the coin owner um, until said transaction happens. And that is beautiful. Let's talk about that that process because, so as an example, if I'm a user and I have, let's say Litecoin and I want to turn it into, uh, I don't know, what uh, what's the Thor chain coin? Is it runes? Something like, Something that. like that. Or yeah. if I want to turn it into, let's say that one, and I, I'm specifically choosing non-Ethereum coins. And, and I, I think we're, we're talking about Ethereum. I think Uniswap's also on Polygon, isn't it? Or there's another one? Probably. Yeah, you, there is, so yeah, you can yeah. do it. You can do it through other ones too. But but the process. If I have Litecoin and I want to use a liquidity pool to to actually swap out right. funds, not I'm not talking about supporting you, but the process is I have to I have to send my Litecoin to a, a Litecoin address that Correct. is controlled by some party. Uh, now that party could be uh, a number of of um, of uh, it could be a, a multi-sig wallet that is that is controlled by a number of other machines, the oracles, that then yes. will say, okay, your ten Litecoin showed up in this address. It came from your address. This these will appear uh, on Ethereum as as wrapped Litecoin, or sometimes it's referred to, or some other form of uh, rep of Litecoin representation. Yes, it is that representation that you that are sent to you and that's the bridge you just crossed right so you you just crossed a bridge and we've already talked a lot about the difference between a, a side chain uh, moving to a side chain and a bridge which is in, on a divi side chain you will just send it to an address and it will be yours on the side chain that's it correct so you have to do this process to bridge it over to um ethereum now you have it now you've got a wrapped tokenized version of your Litecoin. And again, I say your Litecoin, but it's in somebody else's <laughs> address right now. It's in a smart contract, exactly. Yeah. Well, I mean, on Litecoin, it's in somebody else's address, right? You can't, you actually can't get that. Uh, Correct. That's, that would be true. Right? So now you can put it, you know, you can put it into a liquidity pool and, and take out. But wrapped... what are you putting in the liquidity pool? You're not You're... putting the Litecoin in the liquidity pool. No, the wrapped Litecoin. The, yes, exactly. The, it's a tokenized yes. version. Yeah, it's exactly. a tokenized version of it. Right. And so now you have, you 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 send it into this liquidity pool and pull out, as I said, uh, uh, I think it's runes, uh, wrapped runes, <laughs> right? And now I have to go backwards through this process. I have to put that into the bridging smart contract that will make it appear uh, into uh, their address on the on Thor chain, uh, which will then send it forward to my address on Thor chain. So that is that is a the best I can do uh, in a using a liquidity pool to swap a coin. That's a and lot I of think, work because you got to go in yeah. mm -hmm. to a contract. That contract is then validated, right? So the, yep. the that transaction is who's the who's the governor there? That's all I would right. want to know. Um, and then it goes into the pool and then a transaction happens in that pool and then it goes back out to the smart contract is what you're saying. And now you said it's going to Thor or is it going to Litecoin? I'm trying to get a visual no, here. No, it, so. it was going from, my example was from Litecoin, which I'm familiar with, to Thor chain, which came first to my head and I'm less familiar with. <laughs> so Okay, to, okay, okay. Because I think sorry. it goes, you, know, you can get back onto Litecoin again, right? So there's one, two... Three, four, five jumps, if I get it correctly, going off Litecoin back into Litecoin to somebody else. So there, yeah, there's, it's there's a simplest form, jumps. right? Yeah. And so now hearing that, you can imagine how with DeFi and the moves to move from one coin to another, or you can imagine actually all the farms uh, activity and um, the different quote unquote utility that have been created around DeFi yeah. every time it's <clears throat> multiple transaction for one move. And so what you can see is you understand how now the network is congested, right? And so oh, yeah. 
the, mm-hmm. the advantage of having, having a sidechain is now, first of all, you remove all those transactions or most of them. And then you also have the ability to scale because you don't have all of that between like on one chain. Um, if ever you get uh, limited, you see that this side chain is now uh, offering the service with, <clears throat> sorry, way too high fees because it's congested. You can probably count to 10 before there is actually uh, some different, like another side chain popping up to actually compete with that one with like very low fees because now it doesn't have the volume. That so is true. That is true. And I it's less that- jumps. It's pure. It's it's user to user or it's user to pool. At that point, it's still two stops. Um, and <clears throat> it's very pure in that respect where the sovereignty of the coin owner is still maintained. No decision is made until the coin owner makes the decision to participate. The coin owner has the ability to remove their liquidity from a pool uh, up and you know up until the point before it actually transacts. Um, and then on the other side, any recipient can join and then procure from a pool or decide not to procure from a pool. And it's directly user to user at this point. It's there's just this. It, it's on chain. I think that's what I keep stressing, and I repeat that over and over again, the purity that Satoshi designed was everything was on chain. And I think that's the key thing. We have to repeat that as the mantra, it's on chain. It's not not a, a an external mechanism, a virtual machine. It's not a layer two. It's not a, a layer three smart contract chain. It's not that at all. It is, it is pure. That's the only thing I can say. <laughs> so let's, take a se- let's take a second. Of- oh, go ahead. Um, before I, I s- switch us off track. Yeah. Right. So, no, I was, I was just going to summarize, actually. I was going to say that the liquidity pool, again, is kind of the simplest ID you can imagine for, for the sidechain because now it is um, some kind of um, compatibility layer, if you will, between, uh, between the two chains and now this um, this liquidity pool is totally trustless, as a voice you were mentioning, and it is also not dependent on the actual layer one. It has its own validators. They are earning uh, their they, they are earning part of the fees, so that the system is actually um, you know efficient and it is auto sufficient. It pays for itself, so that actually you have a real business model. Um, otherwise, the thing dies and. We also believe that it is one of um, the advantage and maybe some would see it as a disadvantage because now you need to have your own validators. But at the end of the day, we also believe that it's better to have uh, this validity to show that it is supported, it is used, and uh, it has its own security layer. And it's not just um, a random smart contract that was, um, you know, started by anybody that could uh, end up in the more than i think now 80 billion uh, that have disappeared in uh, scams and and yeah. other so tricks. let's talk that's actually where i was going to take us to so because we described how funds move but we didn't describe the actual side chain that does this it's not the side chain is not in my example is not a uh, Litecoin to uh, Thor chain liquidity pool. The side chain is a liquidity pool side chain. Um, and Correct. so the, the, the important part there is, and, and what Diggs was just kind of hinting at is the way that this works may provide more growth, but I claim it provides more safety in that the, the swaps you can do and the liquidity pools you can you can support are only the chains that are directly connected to the side chain. So when this all starts for Divi and the first one comes out, right, and only Divi has this technology, uh, it's very difficult to actually have a liquidity pool because there isn't some other coin <laughs> that the side chain would be connected to. So um, we will, you know, that is going to be the first part to it. So we're going to have two coins. It'll be Divi and some other coin that has adopted this technology. And now we can have a liquidity pool because two coins are connected to this side chain. Correct. If we want a third coin, let's say I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just, I'm going for big, but not the biggest. I'm going to say, uh, let's pretend Litecoin adopts this. Now that the same liquidity pool 
sidechain has a Litecoin node attached to it. And now I can have uh, I can have two liquidity, I can have three liquidity pools. I can have the Divi uh, Thorchain one right. as an example. I can have the Divi Litecoin one, and then there's a Litecoin Thorchain one that's possible. Now I add another chain that adopts the technology. And don't forget, the, the benefit to the users is you move funds in there directly. There's no bridges, no attack surface to move your funds in there and utilize it either supporting or by swapping. All of that is beneficial. The other beneficial part is that there is one Litecoin, one Divi, one Thorchain. You know that that's the one. Correct. On Ethereum, on, on uh, there's there's you know there's like I don't know seven Bitcoin representations. Um, you know, is that the right one? You, you know, you, you got to know. You have to be careful that you're sending stuff and that you're. Uh, I remember. I think both Liquid and StakeCount both had ST ETH that they were right uh, it was the name of their token right that that stuff doesn't happen in this model right there's there's just litecoin on the on the side chain there's just divi on the side chain there's just thorchain on the Correct. side chain uh that so that confusion disappears with this model um so all around there's a lot of benefit the hard part is any joe schmo can't just make a coin that shows up in the liquidity pool you actually have to attach a node to the to the side chain that is of an existing blockchain that has this technology in it. Um, so that's the work. Uh, that's it's a right. different kind of work. And again, this can take many different shapes and forms. Like this is the ID that we have, mm -hmm. but then some people could take a different ID and then only restrict some assets or have something which is going from an, an asset that is being traded to one private chain where they would be sending a private asset within a you know private economy. I mean, all those things are possible with side chains. Yep. And I think that the liquidity pool, the ability to do the transfer between two assets and have this AMM, right? Automatic market making. Yeah. It's definitely something that can is be, it can be used as a base for many different services. And you were mentioning that it doesn't make another Litecoin. I mean, in reality, it will make another Litecoin. You would have a tokenized Litecoin on that. Well, yeah, that but, not yeah but it's one. not the same. It's not. No, I, no, I understand exactly. what no, you're I saying. I agree, is, but for the confusion of people. It is not people, the same at all. It, it, is, it is the ownership of that. It is that coin. That's the whole method of communication is that it is, it is the sovereign representation of that asset it is not tokenized because the tokenization is off chain and then no, no i think that's the thing on i think it yeah. is the actual real tokenized that it, is trustless mm -hmm. right because mm -hmm. tokenized means that now you have something else representing okay, okay. your initial so asset you're, right you're meaning in the general sense tokenized right. uh, so I, I i agree with that then so well i just want to be clear when we speak about tokenization there is an extraction that goes away from the main chain it goes away from um it becomes layers and layers and layers away uh it's a funny conversation i was on uh, spaces uh, a while back and nick was on the spaces and you know nick is really involved in some of these layer extraction chains um and he does he likes nfts right that's one of the things if you follow some of his tweets he's really big into the nfts every single movement you get away where you tokenize that asset you get further and further away from the native chain at some point in time it's not possible to come back i fear for that for some of these people mm -hmm. it it is it is this is pure um it is a i can't even disclose what what it is but how it works is is pure that's all i want to say <laughs> that's i won't say anymore i'll start saying too much i can't disclose yet meeks is smiling <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah yeah can't yeah. see me smile i have facial hair i think that we we also um we actually had another topic but i think that we'll keep that for next time uh, the topic is exchange listing. I think we need to talk about that. We need to talk about what could be the expectations and um, what we believe is actually the right direction. 
um, in between that video and the next one, there will be proposals coming up um, on the DAO and some articles. I think we'll have a chance to talk about them in the next video. But I think otherwise, um, it was pretty good. What do you think, guys? I think I think so. I think so. Uh, I'll just say this: if you do have some information on exchanges, reminder: we said post those comments on these and then we will be prepared for some of those conversations on the next video. So we're going to have lots to talk about on. So exchanges. if you say that, I think you need to clarify that. Um, cause look, we say that we're not, we're not the team. We're not the only ones and all that, but yeah. we definitely try to make things move forward within the you know, realm of our possibilities. However, if you actually, um, Think about an exchange or a marketing agency or whoever you believe that we should talk to. You need to kind of think through that first. Uh, you need of to course. see if you have a contact, uh, see if you actually have the pricing or anything, because if you're just throwing it at us, um, you just have to understand that we just put that in our list, right? And you might see a big interest to that and we might not be aligned with that interest. So the easier you make it for us to look at it and move forward, the more chances you have that we move forward with that proposal. All right. Did I kill everybody? <laughs> no, yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> We're all sleeping now. I fell asleep with that. No, kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I mean, so I, so I'm getting okay, up. I'm getting up. So here. now we can have fun. So some of the comments were is, is as you can see, my right eye. If I lean a little bit, it opens up. But I must have a lazy eye. No, I'm kidding. You can see on my screen. Can I close one eye over the other? I'm going to close my left eye. There's my left eye, and I'll close my right eye. Does my right eye close? It doesn't. Does it? Yeah, I don't know. Let me... My eyes get bigger. My like, eyebrows I can be go a up. Burger. No, but look at my eyebrows can go up. Even so, as a burger, I can yeah. close my eyes. You're a... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. All I can do is so. open. It. I don't think I can close. Is one closed. One is closed. Yeah. Okay. My left. So my left eye is closed. It shows right <laughs> eye on the screen. Yeah. And oh, there goes okay. my there goes my yeah. right eye. But I can't I can't wink and keep my left eye open. Uh, but there it goes. I did it. So you can see. Yes. <laughs> so I can I can wink things independently. Uh, but good. I don't okay, know so. why. You guys can see that both Rob and I wear glasses. Now I'm blind. So <laughs> yeah. The light is reflecting off of the glasses. So my avatar shows. It's probably, I don't know, negatively influenced by that so <laughs> i'm not winking at everyone can you move your no. eyebrows it just happens. i can yeah, i can raise can them do that. See, there's my eyebrows they raise yeah. see that yeah, so i'll put can them do down that. put them up they don't, they don't raise so much oh yeah maybe because no. of the glasses yes yeah and, if, and the funny part is when i take my glasses off my glasses don't come off <laughs> <laughs> exactly exactly it's not aligned no it's exactly. not <laughs> you, need, you need to sink the glasses yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you take the glass. It would be cool if you could raise your hand and pull the glasses off. That would yes. be uh, yeah. That would be but I, crazy. I will, I will say that the hand tracking is is utterly bizarre in this. Like, oh, I, I don't understand really, how people use it, that. It, looks it doesn't creepy. even work. You just actually inside my body. Yes, You're lucky to have that. It doesn't even work on my side. I don't have hand, yeah. hand tracking. <laughs> I would yeah, need to have a good. like a motion uh, capture thing. Well, yeah, you saw, I think it was the last, uh, was it the last spaces? It was some, it maybe we ended up in the funny shorts, but I was talking and my arm was pointed up in the air. My, my right arm was just <laughs> sticking straight out. I had to reset yeah. the app. So yeah, I didn't even know how that got turned on. As I said earlier, yeah, really, like in fact, yeah, I mean, we could potentially yes, have a little better than that, but we would need to have motion sensors. <laughs> we would need to have a designer making, um, some avatars and. I mean, obviously, there it's are all cool the costs that are prioritized right now. Yeah, yeah. But maybe maybe later down the road, it could be really interesting. Yeah. Cool. We'll see. Sounds yeah. good. All right, guys. I think we're Thanks, done. Thanks, guys. We'll call it a day. Thank yeah, you. Have a, have a good time. Wait, see you next time. Wait, and since you're at the end, comment, comment, comment. Please That's make right. sure you comment. Like, subscribe, share. Please if you do have that. It really helps. Issues, support.divvyproject.org. Always support.divvyproject.org. Discord is great for simple communication, simple things, but support.divproject.org. Put those messages in there. I will help you. Gary will help you. We'll all help. Perfect. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye.
Bye. Yeah.